Friends, welcome. Thank you for joining me, fans of crypto woo, astrology, and um, all things related to cryptocurrency. My name is Aura. I am your astrologer. I am the crypto astrologer, and um, I have reports that tell you what crypto is going to be doing, what Bitcoin is going to be doing, the market maker of crypto that have a very proven record. So you can take a look in the description link below for that information. So uh, this week, let's look at what's going on with the stars. Um, so it's been a dramatic week. I have been saying in my uh, videos that we were going to have a lot of sort of uh, public news about these horrible um, like people like Jeffrey Epstein. So Jeffrey Epstein was arrested just around the time of the total solar eclipse. As I had been predicting, things of this nature would be coming to the public. So um, the recent suicide of Jeffrey Epstein does bring some things into question. Um, I'm going to do another video this week about the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing and bring some information out to you as well as kind of a overall coverage of what's already out there that might give you a new perspective on just what's going on with that. So um, it is, in fact, the linchpin that will unravel the cabal, but it doesn't look like it right now because the man is, you know, he died in a, uh, under suicide watch. So we don't, you know, have the facts about what really happened, but let's talk about the stars. Let's talk about this week. So um, this week we have, um, we're likely, so first of all, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin this week. As it says in my crypto timing report, we are in a conflicting pattern where there's good astrological aspects and bad astrological aspects. What that means is that we're going up and down, okay? We're going up and down for as long as that pattern is present. Then we're going to have the next move and all of that is in my timing report as well as the direction of the next move. So, but this week it's a sideways action. It's up and down. We're likely to have something of a rally around the 14th, 15th rally, meaning going only up into the 11th, you know, the top of this trading range that we're in. We're not going up over 12. We're going to stay in this sideways motion, but we'll be on the upswing of this ricochet that we have going on. So we're going to probably go down, then go up around the 14th, 15th, go down again and continue to form this flag pattern that's going on or falling wedge or rising, whichever wedge it winds up being most likely a falling wedge. So that's what is going on this week with the uh, Bitcoin market. So it's not particularly exciting week uh, for the moves of crypto. Um, altcoins are, some of them are going to do okay. Essentially, this is kind of a, it's a squeezing pattern, right? So there's really just kind of nothing dramatic in any one area too much this week. So, okay. Um, and also what's going on this week astrologically? There's, okay, this week astrologically we have a new moon in Aquarius, which is the sign that rules, um, I'm sorry, it's a full moon in Aquarius. It's the sign that rules cryptocurrencies and digital money. So there's some kind of completion of a cycle. That doesn't mean the end of anything around cryptocurrency, just kind of an end to a cycle that we've been in. And also we have uh, Uranus, planet of cryptocurrencies, is changing directions and it is turning retrograde on August 12th. So we're about to go into a more internal cycle around all of this stuff. So there's going to be some big changes coming up here. And um, on August 11th, Jupiter, which is today, Jupiter makes its station direct motion. Then um, we have uh, the, yes, the full moon, uh, Mars on the 18th goes into Virgo. And then next week we have Venus and the sun go into Virgo for Virgo season. So we have a lot of sort of changing energy happening. And with these two big planets changing directions, Jupiter and Uranus, um, some yoga, going for a nice long walk, all that kind of stuff helps get us more grounded, especially with Uranus uh, retrograde because Uranus is uh, it's most definitely likely to bring a lot of earth change, disasters, <laughs> like uh, earthquakes, things like that. So um, weather weather phenomenon in the next few months while re Uranus is retrograde, and that's going on for, for quite a while. Actually, let's, let's uh, go down here so I can show this to you. Um, just move myself, uh, make myself a little smaller. Um, so, so this week, um, the 
I did the chart for the uh, full moon in Aquarius. And we do have a lot going on, like I said, um, with these changing uh, directions of planets. So first of all, Uranus is over here in Taurus at six degrees Taurus. So, so it's going to go back over some of the territory it's gone over this year since it went um, into, into Taurus in the beginning of this year. So over the next few months, we're going to have sort of a lot of review of ideas and information related to not just cryptocurrency, but also some of the like uh, money policy because Uranus rules the population. It rules humanity as a whole and it rules technology and how the technology is used. It also rules like broadcasting and sort of the editing that goes on in uh, places like YT, you know, things like that. So there's going to be more attention to a lot of these things as we go back and review them because we're reviewing all that's happened this year. So it's going to be, um, we're at, and we're going to be reviewing all the stuff going on around the Epstein case and uh, some of that other stuff that's happening and also the documents that have been loaded to the network. So there are documents. It doesn't really matter whether Epstein's alive or dead because there's a lot of information coming out that he, you know, whatever he has to say or whatever he had to say about it is really only his words. The real evidence, which is what convicts someone or acquits someone in a court of law, is actually in document form. And that is, in fact, all completely already on the Bitcoin Cash Network. So... We're going to see a lot of that coming out, but it's going to take some months for, for all that to, to unravel. Okay, and then Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter, let's get myself out of the way here. Uh, Jupiter's over here. Um, you can see Jupiter is down here in Sagittarius um, at what degree of Sagittarius is Jupiter? Jupiter is at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. So if you have planets around 14 degrees Sag or any, any 14 degree actually planet is going to be feeling the shift of energy in Jupiter and any planets that you have around six degrees are going to feel the shift of degree of energy in Aquarius. So the Jupiter stuff is our um, opportunities, our luck, our blessings, right? The good stuff. And since Jupiter is finally turning around to go direct, that means things we've been working on for a long time, it's going to sort of land some results in our lap. So that's really good. Um, it's especially good for people who are teachers. Uh, people who deal with foreigners or foreign affairs or multicultural things um, can be to do with publishing, especially book publishing and uh, travel, higher education, philosophy, information and knowledge. Truth, especially about truth. That is the thing that Jupiter is most concerned with is getting out the truth. So that's nice because we can get some more truth. So um, I know most of us like to see the truth. I mean, some of us like the truth. I like the truth, even if it's painful. Um, it sets you free. So that's going on, and that's a big shift um, for everybody. It's making a nice trine right now to, um, to uh, well, it, actually the sun and, and Venus did trine it last week. So something that happened last week is likely to come back this week. It's likely to maybe complete in a positive way. Like you're going to get a, yes, you've been approved. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. Of something you maybe worked on last week or two weeks ago that you've been trying to get some sort of answer to now, boom, things move. So that's good. That's great. As Mercury, I mean, as Jupiter starts to move forward, also Jupiter will pick up speed slowly. So over the next few weeks, things are going to get better and better around all that opportunity stuff, especially, especially with relationship to anything to do with truth, higher education, teaching, and knowledge and wisdom. So it's a really, you know, the maybe the knowledge you've been getting, maybe the information you've been digging out is starting to have some sort of practical application in your life. So it's a great, great window of opportunity for all of us to be taking some kind of real action on our thoughts and beliefs. Um, Uranus, we have a uh, well, next week, Mars will make a, a square, I mean, a trine, I'm sorry, to Uranus. Once it gets into Virgo, that's some really good action around um, maybe some trading with cryptocurrency. Also, just being able to take um, action around higher, 
like plans that you have for the public, plans you have for the large scale amounts of people, like the masses, things to do with, uh, there's so many things. It can be music, it can be technology, it can be uh, the internet, it can be broadcasting. There's just a lot of action around all those things that's really blessed next week. Um, so that's nice too. So that's a nice thing to plan for, to try and sort of use that energy to your benefit. Um, all right. And then the full moon. Okay. So here's this full moon, the Aquarius full moon is always in opposition to the sun. That's what a full moon is, but it is conjunct Venus. The sun is conjunct Venus for this full moon, which brings up a lot of conflict around values and desires, and maybe a frustration of not getting what we want. Well, you know, we don't always get what we want, but as the stone said, if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. You can't always get what you want but if you try sometimes you just might find you get what you need all right that was terrible i'm really sorry i'm usually much better <laughs> all right so um yeah so there is a little bit of frustration and all this stuff in leo with venus the sun in leo mars in leo leaving leo now we just had the lion's gate event you know lion's gate opening the uh the actual lion's gate portal more or less closes on the 12th, which is tomorrow. However, I did the activation. I did the event on 8-8 and that captured that energy. I opened the portal, brought down the energy, showing people how to meditate and bring that fire, that, that soul fire into their own life. So if you want to check that out, that's also in the links down below. Um, so that energy, this fiery, passionate energy, if we are not um, absorbing it and using it to fuel our own fire, our own light in this life, then what we're going to be experiencing is uh, wounded pride and uh, disrespect and issues of anger and frustration, okay? Because that's the energy that's in focus. That's what Leo energy is about. It's about respect. It's about uh, courage. It's about strength. It's about stepping out into your truth. It's about holding your light. It's about no apologies, no holds barred, being who and what you're meant to be. So if we're feeling frustrated, if we're feeling um, disrespected, if we're having anger issues with other people, that's because we have to step into our own light. And there is some inner strength, that strengthening that needs to be taking place. And I highly recommend checking out the Lion's Gate a meditation I did because it's specifically designed to help people step into that power and be in their own inner alignment and strength because that's where it all comes from. It all starts with you. You are the source of everything that comes into your life. So if it's not quite working, time to burn off the garbage and ground yourself in your own passionate truth. Okay. Power to the people, <laughs> power to the individual through being in connection and in alignment with your own deeper truth. So that energy is still very present. And um, whenever we get frustration coming up, it is entirely an opportunity for us to uh, find a deeper level of connection to our power. So that's good. That's great. So that's what's going on with all that Leo energy. Um, and then uh, the Saturn Pluto thing is still going on over here. It's been going on for a long time. The, uh, the North Node is a little bit um, backed off from Saturn. So um, not totally. It's a little, um, it's still, it's still in alignment with Saturn. So my Capricorn friends out there are still feeling the sort of dumpiness of like universal energy kind of throwing all the garbage in your front yard and like you have to clean it up and it's like wait a minute I didn't make this mess why am I cleaning it up well that's sort of the karmic deal it happens to all of us sometimes so that's what's happening right now with Capricorns uh, but there is an alignment with power here so this is all that breakdown of government stuff that's going on. It's a slow, long burn. It's continuing. It's going on into next year. I will update you when these things become exact because that's when we're going to see the events. That's when we're going to see the banks crumble. That's when we're going to see, you know, the economy really come unglued. Um, I've been saying that it's really going to come out of China and Bitcoin Cash is going to be used in China. That's why Bitcoin Cash is going to go so crazy here in the near future. Also, by the way, I mean, I'm, I'll do this in another video because I can't go in and look at the charts right now, but just remember 
the cryptocurrency that has gone up five times this year already is Bitcoin Cash. It started out and like the end of December at like $79, all right? So that's a 5x return on that one cryptocurrency, and it has not even barely started. So this is why I believe in Bitcoin Cash, and I'm not sure. There are people out there. There's, there's a video. I'll get into this in another video. I can't show you right now, but... Um, just one thing to pay attention to when people talk about Bitcoin Cash and they start saying things like, oh, there's no transaction volume, blah, blah, blah. If they call it Bcash, they are making up a cryptocurrency that doesn't exist. There is no such thing as Bcash. Bcash is a term that was used by the uh, trolls, the paid trolls, to discredit Bitcoin Cash when it first came out. They started calling it Bcash because it sounds derogatory. It's kind of like taking a smart woman and calling her a B because she's smart and she has her own opinions. So I find it offensive that they call Bcash, Bitcoin Cash, Bcash. So that is not a real cryptocurrency. It was a cryptocurrency a few years ago that failed. So Bcash doesn't exist. So somebody who calls it that, it is entirely a, um, a framing mechanism. It is being done for um, propaganda purposes, to discredit it, to put it down. It's like someone making a sexist comment to discredit a woman and make her look dumb because she's smart and they don't like what she's saying. So that is what that term is. So if anybody's calling it that and then they're saying it has, you know, trying to come out with facts, I would say... I wouldn't trust their facts because, frankly, they're talking about something that doesn't exist. Bcash doesn't exist. There is no such thing. So there you go. That's my take on that. Sorry to get ranty on that one. But it's, you know, I understand how those sort of perceptions are used to manipulate ideas. And it's been very effective at cutting down um, the best cryptocurrency out there. So, all right. Let's look at each of you guys and what's going on astrologically for you. So let's start with um, the uh, sun moon because we have this uh, full moon going on. So starting with uh, Leo up here, it is Leo season, the sun in Leo. So it's a tense week. Um, there's a pressure on for Leos, especially in relationships and uh, some sort of random unexpected behavior from others is uh, maybe the kind of thing that's gone on many times and that makes you feel like you've been, someone went around you and didn't listen to you or just did something behind your back. This could be like the straw that broke the camel's back. If you're dealing with somebody who does stuff like that, this is that moment where you're like, I'm done. I've had it. I'm out of here. I need to respect myself. I'm not putting up with someone disrespecting me, going behind my back, lying to me, manipulating me, just doing this kind of stuff. So I do get something like that going on around Leo energy. Um, it's interesting because Leos are usually very straightforward, honest people. So um, often people like that can find manipulative people drawn to them. So I am seeing some kind of manipulation here that you need to kind of go, that's it. I'm done. Okay. It might be a relationship. It could be in a social dynamic as well. It could be sort of like a, like a overall dynamic in some environment that you're in. So that's the deal for Leo's, but, um, you know, it's going to, you are with Venus there, you are getting a lot of good attention and having a nice time. So that's also, you know, the good side of it this week. Um, and then uh, for Cancers, uh, with the moon over here in Aquarius opposing the sun. So this is, you know, you know the moon moves really quickly. But uh, this is a feeling of very feeling de detached and disconnected. Like uh, my Cancer friends could be like, I, I don't know what to do next. I'm a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of complicated um, information coming at me. I can't, you might be having a little trouble sort of rationally figuring things out. And um, you do need to sort of practically assess what's yours and where your stuff is. Like, I feel like getting really grounded and really physical about like, okay, so I've got this many things over here and I need to move this or organize this or deal with my money. That's going to help you. Like really grounding yourself in very practical physical things is going to help because this is a very electrical feeling week for you with the full moon in Aquarius and you're on us changing directions and going retrograde, it's like um, it's like having your wires fried, okay? You extra, extra need to do things to just 
soothe and calm yourself, especially in nature. Um, maybe some, you know, good, nice, luxurious bath bomb experience or like day at the spa. All of this kind of stuff is going to really help you take a lot of minerals. You need extra minerals right now. I'm getting, um, yes, your body just needs minerals to help ground that electrical energy. So it's intense, but you'll be fine. You'll get through it. It's just um, making sure you get grounded. All right. And then my Venus friends, the uh, Libras and Tauruses, let's start with Taurus. Um, okay. Venus and Leo is, you know, and conjunct the sun. It's nice and lovely. It brings a lot of, you know, warm energy. It makes people friendly, but it's in Leo. So it's kind of hard for, for my Taurus friends, especially with Uranus electrocuting you by going retrograde in your sign. So you're feeling a little bit like you're also feeling your circuits fried, not quite in the emotional way that cancers are, but it's more like, so Taurus tends to be kind of good at uh, rational thought, thinking things through. So it's like, I can't figure, you know, my brain's not working that well. Um, and it's a purpose. There's a purpose for this. Universe is actually asking you to stop thinking so much and to be in your heart, which I talk a lot about on this channel. Talk a lot about how manifestation, oops, I just smashed my microphone. Sorry, <laughs> that sounded horrible. So I talk a lot about how manifestation comes out of being connected into our hearts, heart center. Um, in the um, Lionsgate portal event, I bring people through a meditation where I have you connecting in with your heart chakra. You put your left hand over your, your heart, and I don't want to block my microphone. Put your left hand over your heart and your right hand over it, and you will feel the resonance of your heart expand just by doing that. And then if you breathe into it a little bit, you expand your manifestation field, literally. So this is a good technique for you this week, Taurus. You really need to do some of this because all your knowledge, all your wisdom is going to come from your heart and your instinct, not your brain. So let that sucker off the hook for at least this week. All right. And then Libras, this energy is much more pleasant for you guys. Um, it's giving you a lot of social juice. It's making you feel like fun. There's good things to do. You've got like nice luxuries when you're hanging out with your friend, good food. It's just really pretty fun. Um, the, uh, and even the Aquarius full moon is also very social for you. So this is a really nice time for you. I just want to make sure that you're, um, you're staying in balance because there is a tendency to get really swept up in whatever's going on with your social circle, with your social dynamic or whatever's going on like technically. So you might not be balancing your attention, the focus of your attention enough. And um, again, get grounded with your honest changing directions. This is good advice for everyone. Everyone needs to ground themselves this is highly electrical energy. And it's very like frying and short circuiting to all of us, even when it's in positive aspect, like it is for you. But you know, it's it, Uranus is in Taurus, so that's still kind of not the most easy energy for you. And it has to do with your shared energy with other people. And you could just deplete yourself. You could just be overextending. You could just be doing more than you should. Staying up too late, not you know, just not being in balance. So bring yourself back into balance and ground yourself, and things will be better. All right, and then my Martian friends, my Marsy guys. Um, here we have uh, Mars over here in Leo still, getting ready to move into Virgo. And it does move into Virgo this week. Like I said earlier, Mars enters Virgo on the 18th, so at the end of this week. So you're kind of finishing up this uh, Leo cycle, and this is for Aries and Scorpios. So for Aries... Um, Mars and Leo is great. It's a lot of fun. You're kind of bringing a completion to some kind of social, uh, cycle and it could have something to do with children like summer's ending, kids are going back to school, you know, just kind of wrapping up all that sort of like energy of creative play, fun, good times with the kids, with the family. Uh, and then it's like, okay, now I got to get serious and get back to work and get focused. Vacations are over very much that sort of energy for you. Um, and so it's like one last hurrah of freedom, <laughs> maybe for the summer. If you don't have kids, it's still going to be present. That kind of energy is still going to be present because as soon as Mars goes into Virgo, the mood completely shifts into get down to business. Let's get our analytical thinking cap on and let's refine all these details and really get 
into work and let's really dig up our sleeve, you know, roll up our sleeves and dig in. So the mood changes dramatically on the 18th. So, you know, enjoy these last couple days of summer while you can. Um, and then for Scorpios, uh, this is a more challenging, you know, dynamic simply because, um, Mars is squaring your sun in a uh, squaring Scorpio up there in Leo, but it is a lot of career stuff and it is whatever work you've been doing, like on your career, you know, it's just the really like pushing, pushing, getting out there, being seen. Um, just like if it's felt like a lot of, uh, like demands have been placed on you, um, it's going to ease up a lot for you. Uh, uh, when Mars goes into Virgo on the 18th, um, and the whole mood shifts into a more, uh, practical, less like you guys aren't. So you might like to be social, but you don't like it 24 seven, right? Just the way that fire signs do fire signs are like 24 seven. I can be around people and not air signs, air and fire are sort of generally extroverted, right? Water and earth are sort of generally introverted. So like, I mean, I'm a water, I mean, an earth sign and with a lot of water in my chart. So I'm really introverted, but I can be social and extroverted for periods of time. And that's how Scorpios are. It's like, okay, I'm out there. I'm doing this party. I'm choosing to go out and socialize and network and meet people. Okay, now I'm done. I'm out. Well, right now it's been like, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. You haven't gotten the break. So that intensity, that sort of demand on your energy is going on until the 18th and then there's a kind of a big shift and you get to feel like relaxed again and you get to have some R&R &R and rejuvenation and I highly recommend you take advantage of that. So like after the 18th, it's a good time to book a spa day and get yourself back up to speed again. Um, but the, uh, the, the whole full moon cycle for you is definitely about home and career and definitely about some sort of new cycle or making a new mark out there somehow on your career, like and home environment and maybe rebalancing all that. So, uh, that's a good cycle. It's a really good new beginning. It's just, um, taken a lot out of you. It's taking a lot of energy. So you need to recharge. Everybody does Mercury, you know, you're on this changing direction and, and it's in your opposite sign of, of Taurus. So that's sign of partnerships. It means that partnerships will be, um, maybe going underground or there's some deep transformation going on around a partner. You have a partner who's going through some big, uh, inner reorientation. So it can be very confusing and very, um, unpredictable and just doesn't look like anything you can make sense of. You're just going to have to like say, well, whatever, give it some space and let it unfold because it's going to take some months for that to happen. However, I will say on the other side of this, uh, sort of early next year and stuff, it's going to be a complete transformation. All right. And then let's move on to the Mercury friends here, uh, the Virgo and Gemini's. So Mercury up here in Leo, um, is training Jupiter uh, a little bit later, later this week, next week. Um, all right. So for Virgos, that's really nice. It's, a uh, it's a lot of discovery of stuff that is existing back here in the level of unconsciousness, things that you haven't been aware of. So there's a lot of revelations and insights and maybe intuition that's opening up for you, giving you more um, insight about stuff you hadn't known about yourself and why you're motivated by certain things or doing certain things. And it can also be very uh, intuitive and psychic. So there's some kind of insight available, really strong insight for you. Um, the uh, full moon um, is also in your 12th house and also bringing up deep unresolved psychic emotional issues uh all about your health and bringing your health into balance it's all your 12 it's it's focusing on the sixth house which is the virgo house so it's it's really like bring your attention back to yourself and figure out how to heal yourself does that mean you know maybe you need to change the way you're eating maybe you know some habits because virgo is all about habits it's all about health it's all about just setting you know clearing things up and getting them set up in a way that get your routine set up in a way that works for you in other words you can't like go indefinitely without sleeping you can't go indefinitely without eating good foods you can't go indefinitely can't drink coffee all day every day and like not have it have an impact on your body so it's about setting up structure that actually works based on the principles of 
humanity. It's like you can't live against gravity forever, right? Gravity's gonna have its day. In the end, the laws of gravity win. So that's Virgo. And for Gemini, um, uh, this energy is, there's still a lot of second house money resource uh, organization going on for you. Um, it's going to move into a more social space for you coming up next week or towards the end of this week. Uh, and more like just being on the phone talking to lots of people. But um, right now it's about organizing and arranging all the pieces of stuff that you have. Um, and, uh, there's the full moon also for you is, uh, the full moon's very social. It's very much about, um, the people that you're talking to, managing, dealing with, but there could be a conflict, um, a philosophical conflict in your social environment, something that you have to communicate with others about, like somebody is in conflict with the, the values, the ideas of someone else, and you're kind of playing middleman. Uh, Gemini is generally the world's best diplomat. That's sort of the diplomatic sign. Um, as long as you are paying it, you, you're operating out of a principle or an ideal or a concept that you're, you know, promoting or that you, you live from. So whether that's truth or integrity, honesty, whatever that truth or principle is for you. So there's something going on here where there's some pride and ego at a, against uh, something to do with like what the public or the group is needing. So you're in the middle trying to balance the individual needs and the group needs. And so if you can come at it from the most principled way possible, things will be able to be smoothed out as much as, you know, in a better way. But generally, um, you know, individuals needs need to be met but also the collective need needs to be met. So there's this, it's a, de it's a delicate dynamic. I don't know. It's, this is all general. So I don't know what anyone's individual situation is, but there is an opportunity here for you to be using all your diplomatic skills and bringing them to, uh, to bear here on this situation. And then, um, but you'll do it. Yeah, that's your, that's your life path. Um, okay. So let's move on to, uh, the, Jupiter, you know, Sagittarius and Pisces over here. I'm just thinking real quick, make sure I didn't skip anybody. Uh, all the way through those guys. I did Libra, did Scorpio. Okay, Sagittarius, oops, go away. Sagittarius and uh, Pisces. So let's start with Sag. Okay, Jupiter is going direct. News flash. You can finally move again. You can finally breathe again. It's like, oh my God, I've been you know, backpedaling, backpedaling, backpedaling for six months. And now it's the motion forward. It, it's a big relief. Um, however, you're not completely out of the woods yet because there's still that square to Neptune bringing long-term things to an end. And that's been going on for a long time. Most of the year, you got to change some attitudes, some philosophies, some perspective about something. Um, because this new cycle, this new ability to move forward is going to be only as productive as you've been able to let go of the garbage that's holding you back, right? So the more you can let go of, the faster you move forward. Um, so the full moon for you guys um, is, uh, it's again, a big philosophical change and a, a change in the way you communicate or you express yourself uh, or maybe some emotions around information that you're getting that's making you re-question your thoughts about things. There's just a truth bomb here. There's a um, revelation that's can have a big impact on your philosophical outlook. In fact, it's a little bit like learning, having a new mind map, like, wait, I believed the sky was blue, but now I found out it's green. And now I have to look at everything a little bit differently because my whole entire world map has changed a little bit, a little bit like that. There is some kind of big perceptual change taking place for Sagittarius right now. Um, but it's going to be for the best in the long run. Um, and, s s uh, for Pisces, I see, I feel like, uh, something else going on here for, 
Oh, Sagittarius. Yeah. For also for Sagittarius people, all this burden and, and obstruction and limitation that's been going on in your second house is a long term thing. And this is teaching you some new way of approaching money, finances, and power. This is just a long, long cycle with Saturn and Pluto sitting in your second house. You need a new uh, approach to all things related to your property, possessions, and money. It's forcing that on you. So this is part of that psychological mental reorientation that's taking place and a, a new identity for you is possible through all of this, but it's very deep, profound transformation stuff. So, and also Tauruses could be bringing kind of revolutionary changing change of perspective about things that you're, that's not going to be easy. You might not like it very much, but it's going to help you and it's going to free you. So again, philosophical, open, broad-minded, news and and being open to new information um and then pisces people all right my pisces over there jupiter is changing directions yay but it's a little challenging it's up there in your career sector so something about your career is actually starting to move forward it may have been going backwards a little bit it may have not been uh, flowing that well you may have had to be doing like maybe getting new education or like all those things that are like uh, just like the 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 grind of it and not the the juice of your of your business of your work now that juice is starting to come those rewards are starting to come the blessings are starting to come things are starting to move forward especially like if you had a lawsuit or you had legal issues those are also going to start to move forward so all of this stuff is starting to pick up momentum and pick up speed and will for the next six months be going forward um, it won't always be around your career. So that's just for the next couple months. So this is a really good time to strike while the iron's hot and do really well with pushing your ideas and projects forward in your career. Um, and then finally, last but definitely not least, my Saturn ruled friends, Capricorn and Aquarius. So Capricorn, uh, Capricornicus. Um, yeah, so as I said in the beginning, that sort of feeling of like trash being landed on your front yard that you have to deal with that doesn't feel like your trash is still going on. You still have to sift through those piles of garbage. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to be going away anytime soon. You might as well get used to finding the treasures in there because, hey, you might find someone left a, a very valuable piece of jewelry or something that, you, well, hey, look, I got paid without getting paid. So there's stuff like that. This is kind of teaching you to find the treasure in the trash, literally. Um, what does the full moon do for you? It's definitely about money. Uh, the full moon is bringing some kind of financial cycle to a completion for you. Um, it's something emotional for you. You might feel Ah, it could be about the stock market, like, oh, God, that stock market's looking bad. Or um, something to do with sort of the collective um, energy around the financial system, which is definitely not doing well. Um, and uh, if you're upset or you feel like someone's done something uh, that didn't respect you correctly or treat you correctly, this is going to show you how you can take things in your own hands and change the nature of your own financial um, situation, especially with regards to uh, stocks, bonds, legacies, wills, inheritances, uh, 401ks, all that collective money stuff. So this is definitely a good time for you to be going and completing and ending and leaving those systems that are going down and putting your money into those systems that are going up like precious metals and cryptocurrencies. So that's uh, really all about taking matters into your own hands for Capricorn. And then for Aquarius, um, Aquarius, all right, so this full moon is in your lap. It's literally in your, in your you know, sector. So, um, and your, you know, Saturn is up there in the 12th house. So there is something very confusing, confusing going on for you, very emotional. You 